If you have been studying mathematics for some time, you will have learned that E is an extremely important constant, and it is known to surprise you in the least expected of places. What if I tell you that in the Pascal triangle, it's actually possible to recover the value of E? Yes, that's right, and this is what we will be covering in this video. First, let us recall a few basic facts about the Pascal triangle. Firstly, the definition. The Pascal triangle is formed by having ones on the outer diagonals, and for all the inner terms, it is defined by taking the sum of the two terms above it. For clean notation, we will be counting the rows starting from row 0, and within each row, the terms will also be counted starting from 0. You might have learned that in the nth row, the kth term is given by the binomial coefficient n choose k, which is written in factorial form as shown. Perhaps you may have also learned that if you take the sum of the entries in the nth row, you will get the answer 2 to the power of n, which is pretty amazing the first time I learned it. But have you ever considered taking the product of terms in each row? And this is how we are going to obtain the value e. Now, let us call the product of the terms in row n by pn. And surprise, surprise, the limit of this random looking fraction actually converges to e as n tends to infinity. Actually, let us unpack this fraction a little bit and it will turn out to be less mysterious than you think. This is basically saying that we take the ratio of adjacent row products and then we take the ratio of that ratio and this term actually is the one that converges to e. But why is this true? This seems like a pretty random fact. Actually, there's a very nice way to prove this. What we'll do is we start with the Pascal triangle and we construct a second triangle as follows. Now, we look at a term in the Pascal triangle and we divide it by the term to its lower left. And this gives the corresponding term in the second triangle. Let us work out a formula for the nth row cave term in the second triangle. To do this, we simply use the definition of the term in the Pascal triangle. So we have n choose k divided by n plus 1 choose k. And this gives an expression of n plus 1 minus k over n plus 1 as the formula for the second triangle. Well, let us now consider taking the products of terms in each row. So in the Pascal triangle, we call that product Pn. But how about in the second triangle? Recall that each term in the second triangle is formed by taking the corresponding term in the Pascal triangle and divide it by the term to its lower left. So it's not difficult to convince yourself that the product of the terms in the second triangle is given by Pn over Pn plus 1. Okay, we seem to have gotten the ratio to appear. So to get the ratio of ratios, maybe we do something similar again. And indeed, what we'll do is now we have the second triangle and we construct a third triangle by taking a, a corresponding term and divide by the term to its lower right. And this gives the corresponding term in the third triangle. Now, to work out an explicit formula for the nth row cave term, we simply plug in the formula we have for the second triangle. So, we take the nth row cave term of the second triangle, divide it by the n plus 1 row k plus 1 term in the second triangle. This gives a formula of n plus 2 over n plus 1 for the nth row cave term of the third triangle. Notice that all the terms in the nth row are identical because the formula doesn't depend on k. Now this formula can be written as 1 plus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so far so good. Uh, what about the product of the terms in that row? Firstly, recall that for the second triangle, the product of terms in the nth row is given by Pn over Pn plus 1. Now, similarly, in the third triangle, each term is defined by taking the corresponding term in the second triangle divided by the term to its lower right. So once again, it's not difficult to convince yourself that the product of all the terms 
in the nth row is therefore given by the ratio of the two products. So indeed, now we have the ratio of ratio appearing. So this is it, actually. We just need to equate the facts together. We have the ratio of ratios equals to the product of all the terms in the nth row. But the nth row is nothing except just n plus 1 identical copies of the value 1 plus 1 over n plus 1. So the two expressions show they are identical. And now we recall the famous formula for E, namely limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n is equal to E. So indeed, the limit of the ratio of ratios is equal to E. What do you think of this remarkable fact? I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel for more mathematical facts and see you soon.